today we're going to be making some smothered cube steak. Y'all like the pork chops so much. I'm just going to show y'all my smothered steak recipe. Now it's made a little bit different. We're going to put some bell peppers and you can put uh, mushrooms in it if you want. Okay, so what you need to do is first off is have cube steak. And it's, um, I use the kind that's uh, been tenderized, you know, like you get at um, um, the grocery store. It's been tenderized. You make chicken fried steak with it. You need that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my skillet ready. Now, you'll need a big skillet or something with a lid. I don't have a lid, so like last time, I'm going to use my pizza pan. This is a perfect lid for that, for this skillet. So, I like to use um, bacon grease. You can use olive oil, you can use whatever oil you want. Um, we just prefer to use bacon grease. So if you don't have any bacon grease and you just wanna use oil, that is fine. If you wanna use bacon grease, you don't have any, fry a couple pieces of bacon. So I have this little pot I keep my grease in. And uh, while that is heating up, I save it in there and then it, you just heat it up and then pour out how much you need. I'm going to go ahead and season, make sure you can see. See that all right? I'm gonna go ahead and season with uh, some onion powder, some garlic powder, some salt, and some pepper. And this is not going to come out. And we're gonna do both sides. Okay, both sides. Don't use a lot of salt because we are gonna be using some uh, broth and that tends to be salty. And some pepper. We'll turn these over and we'll do the other side. Let's see if my, I bet you this is good enough. Oh yeah, we're probably gonna use about, I would say about four or five tablespoons, okay? Just enough to get it fried. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And let it start slowly Heating up, and we'll turn my meat over, and we're gonna season the other side. It is crazy, crazy cold here in Texas. We never have temperatures like this. It's supposed to get down, this is not wanting to, it's supposed to get down to minus two. And uh, we don't have temperatures like that here. I don't know if I've even been in minus weather before. Now, I've been to Alaska in the summer, but I tell you what, this is brutal. I have to put the dogs up, have to cover everything up. It is just a mess. Okay, there got the onion powder and I'm going to put some garlic powder. And I'm going to go ahead and put some in my flour too here. So we're going to season. Let me put some that. We're going to use this to dredge our steaks and then we're also going to use it to make our gravy. Okay, let's see if our oil is getting warm. It's starting to. This was my, my nanny skillet. She got it for a wedding present and she's doing really bad. If you'll, I haven't said anything on her, on about her on the channel. A few of y'all know though, they put her on hospice a week or two ago. And so that's what mama came back to. Y'all know her as granny. That's granny came back to her mother, nanny. We call her nanny being on hospice. So it's been hard. Mom won't leave her. She stays right there. So but she's doing, mama, granny is doing really well. But nanny, I don't, I don't know what, what's going to happen. Okay, let's start dredging these um, these steaks. This is not hard, y'all. People think that old time cooking is hard. It's not. It's a little time consuming, but it's not hard and it is cheaper if you're on a budget. Box stuff is too expensive. But back to this weather. Oh, I tell you, we are not, not used to it. I think it's of the devil to be this cold. Yep. A high of 10. We're, tech, this is Texas. We don't, 
we're not used to this. I mean, you go to the feed store, there's no hay. You go to, uh, there's no hay, there's no, there's no kind of fuel. I mean, Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, all of the tractor supply, nowhere. There's no, there's no kind of fuel to, as a, because they're telling us on the news, have an alternate way to heat your home just in case we have power outages because our grids aren't used to this and then have plenty of water well how are we going to get it if there's none on the market to buy it's crazy crazy but we have a wood stove so we're good and we have a well and um so we have water and we have water put up okay so this is probably the way you can test to see if your grease is hot enough is just take your hand, probably have some remnants of some flour on there. Just kind of go like that. If it sizzles, it's ready. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stick these in here. And you don't have to fry these, or, uh, fry these until they're done. We're just gonna fry them until they're brown. Okay, just to get the taste. That one got stuck together. And I kind of cut mine up in little pieces because we're going to put this over rice. You can put it over mashed potatoes. You can put it, you can add potatoes to your pot, kind of like I did. And we'll turn this fire down because it seems like it's getting a little hot. Um, the, the smothered pork chops, we just I just put potatoes in here with it when I cooked it, if you want to go watch that recipe. But this one we're going to do over rice. Okay, we're going to probably cook these about, I'd say about two or three minutes on each side. And then we're going to pull them up. And, uh, and I'll show you the next step. So I'll be right back after I've cooked these about two or three minutes on each side. Okay, while this is finishing cooking on the other side, you want to chop an onion. You can chop it or you can make it in little strips like I did. Uh, for this, I like strips, but whatever you want. Now, I'm going to also show you, these are some bell peppers from our garden. Now, when we have bell peppers in the garden season, uh, they just make all the time. So, what I do is I chop them up and I just put them in the freezer. You don't have to blanch them. You, you blanch them, sometimes you lose some flavor. But I just chop them up, and so it makes it wonderful for stuff like this. I just grab a handful and uh, and use them. Okay, we're going to use uh, some beef broth. So let's go ahead and get that ready. And I like to use uh, the, the granule or the powder kind. And this is a four cup uh, measuring cup. And I'm going to use two spoons. I don't go by the directions on this thing. I just do what I want to. So I always just use two spoons, kind of heaping. It's just a regular old spoon. It's not a measuring spoon. Just kind of do what you want. And then I'm going to fill this up. Now this is four cups. We may need a little more or we may need a little less. I'm just going to fill this up with some water. And whisk it around and have it ready. Okay. Love this little measures. Cause I just got that not long ago. That and this. Can you? I don't know, y'all. Yeah, y'all can see that. That right there, I got for my my birthday. Y'all seen that video? Okay, this is getting really almost done. It's kind of drying out, so I think I'm going to pour a little bit more bacon grease in here. Well, I'm having a time. But, uh, that makes it good, y'all. I think these are done. So I'm going to pull them up. See how they're not all the way done. We don't want them all the way done. We just want them brown. Because they're going to they're gonna cook with the when we do the gravy. So as long as they're brown, it's all we want. Okay? Now it's good to have your onion already, already done when you get to this point, uh, chopped up. Okay, and I'll show you why. 
pieces. We are going to deglaze this pan with onion. You want a good flat wooden spoon, okay? Flat, like this, or any spoon. You're just a good spoon that will scrape. Okay, put your onion in there. And let me get my little pot thing that I have. I don't burn myself. Turn our fire down. And we're going to scrape this skillet to get all of that good stuff. It's called deglazing. And if you have to add just a tad bit of broth in there to get up some stubborn ones, that's okay. Okay? But you just want to put a couple of drops. You don't want to put a lot because uh, we got to put our flour in first. But I think this is going to be good. We don't have to put anything in there but the onion. The liquid from the onion is going to be good. Okay, we got it all scraped. Let me show you. See how those little bits of... Uh, up in there that's good we want that we don't want that to burn to the bottom and uh, so we're just gonna let these onions cook now they don't have to be translucent or anything we're just gonna let them cook just for a minute I tell you what it's getting hot in here we're, we're not used to having this wood stove going for days and days let me show you isn't that pretty it's been going now for four days, and it looks like it's going to go for about another four, well, they said till Friday, and this is Saturday. So it's going to go for a while. Get out of the kitchen, Drake. Go on. And I just have Jama bottoms on. I don't know if y'all, hopefully y'all can't see that part. You hear about those Zoom, <laughs> those Zoom things. They have, they have shirt and tie on. Then they stand up and they got on their skivvies. Okay, now we're going to use this flour right here. Uh, if you feel like it don't have enough liquid in here, now we need liquid. This was a little dry. So I'm going to put probably a little bit more. However much, there is a rule of thumb. However much grease you're using, that's how much flour you're going to need to use. So if I use three tablespoons of grease, that's with any gravy, white gravy, brown gravy, whatever. If you use three or four tablespoons of grease, you need three or four tablespoons of flour. Now, I've done it so long that I just kind of eye it. But that's a good rule of thumb for somebody that's not really uh, used to cooking it yet, okay? So, and, and then it's in the same with your liquid. So, if you do three, three, and three, or two, two, and two, just whatever you use it'll turn out it'll never be too uh thin okay so i probably got about four there let's turn this fire off probably added about four tablespoons right there okay because that flour and that stuff is pretty much soak it up okay now i'm just going to eye and we're probably going to do about four tablespoons of uh of this flour and we're going to stir it around and it's going to look kind of clumpy and just not good at all you're going to think oh this ain't going to turn out but it is i, I wish y'all could see down in this pan that i need to stir it but it's going to look it's just going to look awful awful let me let you Unless you see. See how that just looks pitiful? That's okay. You just keep on stirring. And then you keep on. You want to get the flour. And all that brown. Because if you don't get it brown. You're going to have a white gravy. We want a brown gravy. Okay. So I got my fire on kind of a really low heat. And if you feel like, oh, I put too much flour, it's just not, it's not soaking in, just put you a, a drip, just a drip, more grease in there. Okay? It's all kind of a trial and error. I think we're, I think we're good now. 
cook that flour taste out. Don't, don't be in a real big hurry to add your broth because uh, you want that flour taste out of here. Just brown it up to your breath. My light burn out and I keep forgetting to, every time I go to the store we, or Kristen, Chris or whatever, we forget to get it. Okay, now I wanna show you now because I think that this is brown enough. See how it's kind of brown? That lighting might, the lighting might not be too good. But um, the, the flower is not white anymore, it's, it's brown. So we are going to slowly pour in our broth. Now when Chris's grandmother made pork chops like this, she would just use water. But uh, I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time, kind of work that flour in, okay? Don't pour all of it at any time. Put a little bit in there and then just kind of stir it and then pour in some more. And since I used four tablespoons of grease and four tablespoons of flour approximately, I'm probably gonna to need to use this whole thing because this is four cups. So just if you can remember that little equation, two, two, and two, whatever you, if you wanna make one cup, do one, one, and one, just whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use all this. Okay, now we're gonna stir this around until uh, till it starts getting thick. It don't have to be real thick because the longer it cooks, the thicker it's gonna get because that got more flour on that on those steaks, those cube steaks, okay? Just make sure you get your lumps out of that, those flour lumps. I tell you, I am burning up. Oh. What's crazy around here will be so cold, we'll start a fire in that thing. Before long, we gotta open a window. So we just done got it too, got it, do, got it too warm in here. Okay, I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna turn it up just a tad. You always wanna make sure you don't do too much liquid because you can't add flour later. Now you can add a, a um, cornstarch slurry and that, that, will, that will make it thicken, but don't put no more flour in there. You'll have a, a horrible mess. It's better to put a little bit too less liquid in there and then knead it than to put too much in there and, uh, did I say that? To let, it, you get the gist. Okay, we're gonna let that cook for just a minute. Probably as soon as it starts boiling, it's gonna start getting thick. Now we don't have to be, like I said, don't have to be real thick because that flour on those steaks are going to get make this thicker but we want it to be thicker than what this is this is just water watery okay so i'm gonna cook it for probably about another five minutes and i'll be back to show you the consistency okay i have been stirring this constantly because you know stuff settles and you don't want it to uh to uh while you got your heat up at a higher temperature you don't want it to stick but it's to the consistency that I want. It's about halfway to a gravy. It's not watery like it was when we first started, but it's not thick like a gravy yet. But that's what we want right there. And so let me get you, there you go. So at this point, we're gonna add in some garlic. And I like to just use this garlic from the produce and I just use a good spoon. Spoonful, it's just the minced garlic and then I'm going to use a handful of these um, bell peppers if you don't like bell peppers just leave them out okay and you could put um, you could put um, 
mushrooms in there. And just stir that up. Just like that. And then we're going to put our steaks in there. And we're going to let it simmer for probably about 30 minutes. 20-30 minutes. These tend to be a little tough if they're not cooked long enough. Okay? Just kind of put them down in that gravy. And you can put mashed potatoes with this. Like I said, you can put potatoes in this, sliced potatoes, or we're going to have rice. Okay, so they're all in there. Show you. And then we're just going to cover it up with my uh, little pizza pan. I'm going to turn my fire down as low as it'll go. Okay? And it's just going to simmer just like that. Okay? And there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I think it's thick enough. And I'll let you see. See how it's bubbling and it's thick and it's done. It's been going for a while. Now, if you feel like it's too thick or you feel like it's starting to get dry, even with the lid, you can always add a little bit more broth. Just be careful and not add too much. So this is done. So I'm gonna leave this, this lid off. And we've got some green beans going. And of course I do those in bacon grease too with garlic and salt and pepper. And then I've got my, um, rice going over there in the instant pot and it's almost done it just lacks a, a little bit and then it'll be time to eat so we'll see you at the table